the book of Psalm chapter 32, and beginning with verse 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Think about that for a moment. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. This is absolutely a psalm of David. And uh, it's one thing to be forgiven of God. It's another thing totally to be convinced that you have been forgiven by God. And David acknowledged that I have been forgiven by God. And he said, blessed is he who has been forgiven by God. In other words, you can't get any more blessed than having your transgression being forgiven by God. If you've had a transgression forgiven by God, he said, you are blessed. Whose sin is covered. Notice, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, I, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. There's nothing more powerful than having faith in the forgiveness of God. Now, a lot of times we, we understand when we're teaching Bible study, We explain to people, now when you come to God, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not based upon how good you are or how godly you are, but you can come to God as a sinner. And if you have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and the redeeming power of God, he will forgive you. And if you repent and you're willing to be baptized in Jesus' name, He will fill you with the glorious gift of the Holy Ghost. But it takes faith to believe that God will forgive you. And so we teach people to approach the throne room of grace. Not based on your action, but based on faith that God will forgive you and cleanse you and wash you and Wasn't it amazing the first time you heard that in a Bible study? You realize, I don't have to get good to get God. I I just come to God as I am, and God will make me what I need to be. And I give Him my heart. I give Him my soul. And I have faith and confidence in His blood that He will cleanse me of every one of my sins. And I, I don't have to... To, to, to know how to, to live right, right then. We talked about that last week, or not last week, but the week before. We talked about you don't, you don't have to come to God uh, having it all worked out. You come to God and have faith in God and His ability, and He takes care of all of that and rewards you in spite of your past And we tell people that that can all be activated by one simple ingredient, and that is by faith. All you have to do is have faith in the finished work of Calvary's blood. But then we have people that get in condemnation, and they get in a prison, and they never can get out. And the same faith that it takes to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost... It takes that same faith to believe that you have been forgiven by Almighty God. It is not based on feeling. It's not based on emotion. It's not based on whether or not I felt like a ton of bricks was lifted off of me. 
Because sometimes the consequence of actions, the weight, it takes time for that weight to lift. But it doesn't mean that you haven't been forgiven. Oh my, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It doesn't mean you may have the weight of that mistake upon your shoulders, but it doesn't mean it's applied to your, to, to your soul because you've already been forgiven by Almighty God and cleansed and washed and renewed. And it takes absolute faith to believe that I have been forgiven. And David had a revelation. Blessed in the, is the man whose transgression has been forgiven. That man is blessed whose sin is covered. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Somebody needs to understand that forgiveness is activated by my faith in God Almighty. And just as it takes faith to believe in the salvation message, to get to a place to where God could emphatically fill us with the glorious gift of the Holy Ghost, it takes faith to believe that He has forgiven me of my wrongdoing. I have to believe that if I confess that He is faithful to forgive me of every one of my faults, not one or two or, or, a, or a big one or a small one, but I have to believe that He has forgiven me of all of my transgression. David did have a revelation, and I believe God gave it to me this morning, that blessed is the man who has faith, the woman who has faith, to absolutely be convinced that my transgression has been forgiven by Almighty God. And that's what the Lord, that's, that's how healing comes. You may be seated. Isn't it amazing what, what happens in, in the redemption process? When people do believe by faith that Jesus did die for my sins and he, he can forgive me and He can wash me, isn't it amazing the transformation that happens in people's lives when they believe that the Word of God is infallible and true and begins then to live the principles out of this book and as they begin to live these principles and obey these principles, then suddenly their life begins to change. And it begins to uh, be transformed. Their mind is transformed. Their heart is transformed. Their lifestyle is transformed. Their, Their attitude is transformed. And they begin to grow into a grace that they never could merit. A favor that they never could earn a faith that they could never deserve. I hope you understand that this morning, that we are celebrating redemption that we could never earn. Uh, there are many that we do not believe justification by faith as, as denominal Christianity would preach it and proclaim it, but we do believe in justification by faith because you cannot be justified without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And what we have to understand is when we do right, we still need faith in the redemption process of God. Because like David said, deliver me from secret error. There are errors that we don't even know about that we need to be covered by the blood and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. There are thought processes There are attitudes and actions that husbands do toward their wives that Jesus said, I, the Bible even established in principle, God will not even answer your prayer because your prayers are hindered, because you're not honoring the weaker vessel. You're not honoring your wife. So there could be things that we need forgiveness of that we don't even know we need forgiveness of. I mean, we think we've been totally right and clean, but, but Paul said, I've got to die daily, I'm a sinner. He said, of whom I am still chief of sinners. He never took himself away. Now, he wasn't uh, living a life of immorality. He was not justifying 
uh, living a cheap grace ideology where you do any type of sin you want to and the grace of God would cover it all. That's not what he was saying. But he was saying, I'm chief of sinners. I have an Adamic nature. Uh, when I would want to do good, I, I don't do good. When I would want to do right, I don't do right. I'm imperfect. My nature's imperfect. I can't, I, I, I don't see how people can get this idea that, uh, they are so holy. They, uh, everybody is imperfect but them. I don't want to ever get that way. I need God. I need forgiveness right now in my life. I need God to cover my mind right now. I need Him to forgive me right now. I need Him to touch me right now. My attitude's not always right. My spirit is not always right. My nature is a damn before it is any other thing. I have a propensity to do wrong, to think wrong, to be wrong, to do wrong. It's only the grace of God that keeps us living the way we're living. There is no good thing in our flesh. Can I get a witness, somebody? I need Him in the morning. I need Him at noon. I need Him at night. I need forgiveness every day of my life. I need forgiveness. You need forgiveness. Everybody needs forgiveness. But we also need to know that there is forgiveness. There is a release from our sinful nature and control. Uh, I, I, I would uh, say it's very distracting sometimes in the back when I am doing everything I can do from this pulpit to talk and preach to people. And in the back, if you're not doing sound work, in the sound booth, and I expect absolutely no talking back there. Because I am doing everything I can to communicate what God has given to me this morning. And you need to hear it. Because we need forgiveness. And we need by faith to activate the forgiveness into our life by believing that God will forgive us. God will cleanse us. I want to help some of you go on to a healing future. You've got to forgive yourself this morning. You've got to release yourself. The same faith that it took to get into the kingdom, to continue in the kingdom, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And we have to absolutely be convinced that it is the forgiveness of God that He will give us. He will cleanse me from not... Uh, ten sins, but every sin. He will, uh, it's not a hundred sin, every sin. It doesn't matter if it's one or a hundred or a thousand. He will cleanse me from every sin and stain. I'd like to continue to look at our text this morning. David said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Now that's important. Because if you're in denial of your sin, then then you're going to continue in your sin. You have to acknowledge your sin and acknowledge it unto the Lord. And mine iniquity have I not hid. He said, I didn't try to hide my iniquity. I came clean with you. And I told you what I was battling. I told you what my sin issue was. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I told him. What is going on internally inside of me? There's another place uh, in Psalm 51 where David is repenting. He said, Thou desirest truth in the inward part. And there is nothing more important than getting forgiveness, than getting it internally, acknowledging internally that I need to be truthful with God Almighty. If you deny, I don't have a problem, I don't need God, I don't need God to help me, I'm not battling with anything, I've got this lick, I don't need God to help me with my issue, or I don't have an issue. You can't ever get help, but when you are truthful inwardly and say, Lord, this is my problem, this is my situation, this is what I've battled my entire life, 
This is my difficulty. I need you to help me. If you don't help me, if you don't forgive me, I'm in trouble for the rest of my life. But I need you to rescue me. I need you to help me. I need you to wash me. I need you to cleanse me. My problem is lust. My problem is drinking. My problem is promiscuity. My problem is pornography. What, whatever your problem is, if you can honestly begin to unveil it to God Almighty, you can find a healing, you can find help, you can find an ha- answer, but you cannot hide it. David said, I'm not going to hide my transgression. I'm not going to I lock a secret chamber in my heart and say, God, you can't come there. Uh, I'm going to uncover for you everything internally that's inside of me because I want you to fix me. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you ought to go ahead and put a smile on your face because he can fix you. He can fix me. He can make us what we need to be. You've got a future, not a past, but you've got to have faith and confidence in that future. And the future is forgiveness. He will forgive me. He will wash me. He will cleanse me and make me what I need to be. I'm coming out of hiding, and I'm going to confess. And that's what David said. That's the answer. I acknowledge my sin. I let him know what I'm dealing with. And mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. It's time for a divine pause. Maybe just a moment to say thank you, Lord, because I had faith to believe that you would forgive me. My subject title this morning is Don't Worry About It. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. David reached a place. He didn't say I was perfect. He said, no, I had transgressions. I made a bad mistake and then covered it and made another horrible mistake and made another horrible mistake and one sin compounded into another sin and here I was but he said blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven and he said I got to a place to where I had faith and confidence that I had been released by almighty God I didn't have a past, God gave me a future. I didn't have that uh, upon my shoulders. I had been released by Almighty God. And you're going to notice in the next few uh, verses that he reached a place where he was not worried about his past, but he would praise into his future. And he would move beyond the yesterday of his mistake unto the future that God said he could have. Oh my, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Oh my, my past was bleak. Your past was bleak. Uh, I wish we could all say, those of you without sin, stand up and testify. Since I've got the Holy Ghost, I have been a perfect role model. I have been an absolute example of holiness and righteousness. I've never had an attitude, I am the perfect husband. I'm married to the perfect wife. We have perfect children, a perfect cat, and a perfect dog. And everything in our house is perfect. In fact, we are looking for a translation at any moment in our house because perfection is a way and a lifestyle of our family. All we like sheep have gone astray. All we like sheep have made mistakes. All we... All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have made mistakes. We have all, since the Holy Ghost covered us, have done things and said things. And there have been things. You know what would be amazing is some spiritual holier-than-thou individual will get to heaven and then the Lord have to tell them the truth. Can you imagine I would rather acknowledge my dirt right here on earth. I would rather tell him, God, I know you already know. I just want you to know what my issues are. This is my issue. 
Pride is my issue. Arrogance is my issue. Haughtiness is my issue. Perversion is my issue. Lust is my issue. This is my issue. And I need help with my issue. I need help and forgiveness from my issues. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost saying, I am faithful. I am faithful to forgive you every one of your sins. That's what the Bible said. That's not what I said. It said he is faithful to forgive you every one of your sins. So that means I can bring my sin. I can bring my problem. I can acknowledge it in the presence of God and leave that prayer meeting with faith saying, I am forgiven. I am released. Did you feel a release? No. I've had people tell me, I'm, I'm going to quit the church. Why are you quitting the church? Because I, I've made a mistake. Well, what do, you, what do you mean quitting the church over a mistake? Well, I don't feel like I used to feel. Well, let me ask you a couple questions then. When you came to God, did you feel like you deserved Christianity? No. Did he give you forgiveness anyway? Yes. Well, has there been other times in your life that you, you needed God to forgive you and, and you felt like God forgave you? I said, the problem is you don't believe you're forgiven. You don't believe God has forgiven you. Or you don't believe God. And what does feeling have to do with it anyway? You can't base it on feeling. You can't base it on how you feel internally. You have to believe the word of God for what it says. If you confess, he's faithful to forgive you every one of your sins. So if you'll confess, he'll forgive Shall we continue in sin because grace abounds? God forbid. You can't keep doing the same thing. You can't keep doing the same sin. Absolutely not. God forbids. But can I change my direction and God change his divine sentence? Yes. My, my, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Get verses 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation. That word in Greek is sentence executed against you. There is no penalty for them. There is no past. There is no judgment. There is therefore no divine sentence against you. He will forgive you. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He said there is no divine sentence. You have no past. You have no sin. You have no no divine. You have a divine release from everything that has plagued you and come against you. You have to understand that. You have to stand on that. That if I confess, he is faithful to forgive me, and there will be no divine sentence against me. That God will not hold that sin to my charge. And then you have to just stand on that word and stand upon his truth. And you have to don't worry about it. You can't allow your mind to take take you back to yesterday. You have to walk beyond the, the mistake. You have to walk beyond and keep walking into the presence and power of God. You turn your back on that sin and walk faithfully toward him and he will forgive you. He will release you. He will not hold that to your charge. He won't say you have to get over that or you, uh, you have you're going to have to prove yourself now when you're forgiven my friend you're forgiven when you release your children they're released there is no penalties attached and that's what he's saying there is therefore now no divine sentence to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit when you fall you have to get up and dust yourself off And you have to by faith believe that your transgression is forgiven. I pray that faith, the gift of faith, would be in operation today. 
I pray that faith would work in somebody's mind and you could move beyond the mistake of your past into the glorious redemption and future that God has given to you. That you could move, just keep moving, just keep walking, sister. Just get up and dust yourself off and move toward the divine future. Not a divine sentence, not a divine penalty. Not God going to curse you now because of the mistakes you've made. Folks, I'm, I'm glad that the curse has been lifted. I'm glad that God is not holding my sin to my charge and saying I'm not going to bless you anymore because God... Look, if you only could equate, if, if I could somehow, if God could help me to articulate this, there were things you don't even know about that were as bad as what you can't get over right now. I can't get over this. I can't get beyond this. You did things worse and God would have to explain it to you in order to reveal it to you. I'm saying you got to get over yesterday. Don't worry about it. Get it behind you and move toward the future that God said you can have. Don't worry about your past. Worry about pleasing Him in the future. Worry about loving Him. Worry about praising Him. Worry about being faithful to Him. But don't worry about yesterday. Move beyond your yesterday into the future that He said you can have. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, don't worry about it. Don't worry about not being the husband that you've never been. Don't worry about being the wife that you've never been. Don't worry about who you were. Worry about who you're going to become. Notice what David said. David said, thou art my hiding place, for thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule. There's nothing that can make it more difficult for you in your life than stubbornness and rebellion. Stubbornness, rebellion is what man gets when he when he crossbreeds what God never intended to be matched up man's hybrid becomes man's hurdle to get over because stubbornness and rebellion is what you get when you get a mule if you don't believe it you've never been around mules They are subject to kick, they are subject to bite, and they will throw you at any given moment. Mules, stubborn, rebellion. Yes, they can be broke. There's not an animal that cannot be tamed. But mules. Notice, be not ye as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Don't be stubborn, don't be rebellious. Notice. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall come pass him about. In spite of my imperfections, those who pursue and live for Almighty God, who like David acknowledge their sin and confess that I need forgiveness, he said, mercy is going to compass him about. Mercy is going to encircle you. Mercy is going to cover you. Mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life. I Come and help me. If you could understand this, mercy and truth shall follow you. Here I am, I'm an imperfect man living in an imperfect world with an imperfect nature, but mercy is following me. I'm not everything I want to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be because mercy is following me. Mercy is encircling me. 
It's encompassing me. Just make a circle. It's constantly around me. It's not ever going to leave me. Mercy, mercy is here. Thank God for mercy. But if I never activate the mercy of God, if I never join with the mercy of God, if I never accept the mercy of God, if I never accept, he said, blessed is the man who has whose transgression has been forgiven. How in the world can you for accept the forgiveness of God without the acknowledgement by faith that you have been forgiven? You have to first believe it to activate it, that He is going to forgive me. You have word to stand on this morning that if I confess and forsake, He's going to forgive me. He's going to wash me. He's going to help me. He's going to make me everything I need to be. Folks, I am thankful that forgiveness can be found in Him. Are you glad that forgiveness can be found in Him? God, anoint me like I've never been anointed. In the last five minutes of this sermon, I need, I need help to get through to your people. Talk to somebody today. Release them from their yesterday so they can move into the future of healing and help and provision and unity and power. I'll never get over this. Oh yes, you will if you acknowledge by faith. If you can get to a point where you can shout, I'm forgiven. I am forgiven of that. Because when you acknowledge that you're forgiven, you'll release yourself. And you'll move into the future. Not as a prisoner, but as a free man. And a free woman that understands that I don't have to worry about that anymore. I don't care. Look, look, folks. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. He's never going to let you forget a mistake. I, I remember, uh, you know, the famous golfer Arnold Palmer. How many of you have ever ordered an Arnold Palmer? Who would ever think that a man could make a drink famous? Half tea and half lemonade, the Arnold Palmer. You got it, everybody? Arnold Palmer, I think, did eight strokes. Uh, uh, par was three strokes on a particular. And they built a, a sign and a memorial and said that Arnold Palmer took 12 strokes on this hole. He went on later to move beyond his mistake to win the PGA. But he said... People didn't take down the sign. But it doesn't matter if people take down the sign or not. You can move beyond your yesterday. No matter what people are saying. You can win the PGA. You can have victory in God. It doesn't matter if they keep the sign up reminding you of your mistake for the rest of your life. You have to acknowledge, I'm free. I'm delivered. I am not who they say I am. I have been forgiven by Almighty God. Forget the ignorant sign. Don't worry about the sign. Whether they take the sign down or not, you have been forgiven. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven. And, and only, only ridiculous people remind people of their sinful past. Only people who think they have no past. I want to tell you, I don't want to put up a sign and build a memorial to somebody's mistake. I want to rip down all the signs because I want people to have a future. You know why? I want a future. I don't want anybody building signs and memorials to my mistake. You know why I don't have a problem taking down signs? Because God's taken down my signs. He holds nothing to my charge. Notice what David said in the last two minutes of this sermon. And I close as the musicians make their way to the front. He said, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. He said, now be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy. 
all ye that are upright in your heart. Once you get your heart right, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about the signs that people put up in memory of your past mistake. If your heart is right, mercy will follow you all the days of your life. I was never as good as I thought I was when I was good. And I was never as bad as I thought I was when I was bad. God is so great. God is so faithful. God is so righteous. Righteous to remember and righteous to forget. God knows what sins He needs to forget. He knows what what things He needs to remember. David said, He has chosen to not remember my transgressions. David said, I don't have to worry about it. David was actually singing a revelation. I don't I can rejoice because my sin and my transgression is forgiven. He said, Mercy's following me. I was honest. I came clean. I told God what my dilemma was, and, and I'm blessed because He's forgiven me. He's washed me, and I don't have to worry about it. I I can rejoice. I can praise Him. I can move on now. I can go forward. I can have a future in Him. I can have hope in Him, and my family can have hope in Him. And David didn't realize how divine the covenant of God was. The covenant that had no divine sentence. He said, I'm going into covenant with you, David, but I'm also going into covenant with your children. And he said, if they err and they make a mistake, I'll chastise them with stripes. I'll correct them, but I will never remove my loving kindness from them. I will love them. I will show them kindness. Can you imagine that in the Old Testament, before there was a Calvary, that God could show mercy to a man that deserved to die? How much more in a dispensation called grace, should you be able to wrap your brain around the fact that God can forgive me of this? God will move me beyond this, and I will. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven. And David saying, you can get to a place to where you don't have to worry about it. You can rest in knowing that mercy is following you. That mercy is with you. Would you stand and just lift your hands and thank God for the wonderful mercy of God today. Would Maybe you feel like coming around the altar. Just come around the altar. Raise your hands. And and I feel like faith. Not feeling. I, I don't feel. I don't feel anything. You don't have to feel anything. You just have to by faith... Accept the fact that God's Word is bigger than your sin is. That God's Word is bigger than your past. For I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. (laughs) I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. I will rest, I will divinely pause in the grace and the mercy of the Almighty God. I will not worry about it. I won't worry about my future. I won't worry about my past. I'm going to be blessed because my transgression is forgiven. Sing it. I love you, Jesus. Don't worry about it, sir. Don't worry about it, ma'am. Don't worry about it. Would you just lift hands of faith and say, God, here I am. I never was that good, never was that bad. Deliver me from secret error. I, I love you, Jesus. No divine sentence. No penalty. I love you, Jesus, today. I praise you, Lord.
Kirala boho shatara la maya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Oh, God. Touch Royal Wood. Touch Pearland Tavern. Have mercy today, God. Remember the saints that are in trial today. Remember the saints. Don't worry about it. Oh, let a divine calm come to us, Lord. There is no condemnation once direction is set. Once I'm headed in the right direction, there is no divine penalty. Once I'm moving toward you in your righteousness and holiness, there is no divine sentence. There's no execution of judgment. When I recorrect my steps, when I redirect my path, when I start moving towards your holiness, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are of the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If the forgiveness of God is in you, you're going to make it, my friend, and you don't have to worry about it. If His Spirit is in you, you don't have to worry about it. If His forgiveness is working in you, you don't have to worry about it. Would you lift your hands all over this building? Sing it loud and strong. It's all about... It's all about a mid-course correction. I am correcting my course. Your loving kindness. Turning my back on sin. I'm pursuing God and His righteousness. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. Thank you, Jesus. Lay your hands on the one beside you. Pray one for another that the strength of heaven would be yours. That God would anoint and help and touch you today. I love you, Jesus, today. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for cleansing me and washing me and forgiving me. Thank you for helping me, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. I thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Faith in the forgiveness of God. Not a feeling, but faith. Not a weight lifted, but a word received. I receive your word. Not a weight lifted off of my shoulder, but a word. Your word says if I confess that you're faithful. I'm not looking for something internally. I'm believing by faith that you have released me of every past. Cleanse me. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven whose iniquity is covered. You've covered me, Lord, and I don't have to worry about it. You've covered my sin, and I don't have to worry about it. You've taken care of my past, and I don't have to worry about it. No signs can dig it up. Nothing can bring it up. 
because the penalty has been forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, everyone.